And we're back. Thank you guys for joining me again in another one of my Adobe Illustrator tutorials. We are going to be discussing 3D in Adobe Illustrator today. So a lot of people like to develop three-dimensional objects or things that look more realistic. And a lot of the programs you'll see it used in are Photoshop, uh, maybe Corel, things like that. But you, if you're an Illustrator and uh, or an Illustrator user, rather, let me not say Illustrator because that can be any program. But if you're an Illustrator user, you may be looking for different uh, means that you can actually create an object to be three-dimensional. Now, in a previous class, and it was more so our drawing class, uh, the HD Remix tutorial, if you go through that, I'll show you different techniques in the shading section that talks about how you shade objects to make them appear to have dimension. Okay, and uh, one of the main ways in which you would do that is you would take an object, right? Now I'm going to take an ellipse or a circle, and I'm going to change it to cyan. I'm going to remove the stroke. Um, let's see. And once I've done that, I have a flat circle. Now, in order to create that depth or dimension, there are two things I can do. I can use a gradient or a gradient mesh or a series of uh, flat shapes that would then appear to give a dimension in some form of transition. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to just create, uh, I'm going to copy the shape, paste in front, and I'm going to create a gradient. I'm going to make it radial because it's a circle and I want it to be a sphere in terms of the shape. So I make it radial. And right now that was set to the stroke, so I'm going to get rid of that and go back. Um, and then I'm going to change the blending mode just to multiply. Go back to the gradient and I can hit the G button to flex and adjust the gradient live. Now, if you were with me on any of my other tutorials, especially the ones speaking specifically of gradients, then you'll know that you can manipulate this and you can move this and position it how you want anywhere that you want on your actual shape so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a smaller gradient let's make it a little bit larger and I'm gonna come over here and because I'm only using the multiply effect I'm using uh, basically all of the blacks that are included in this piece so I'm going to take the white and I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way down all right and then I'm gonna grab this go to the transparency and I'm gonna drop that down some more so that way I give it some form of dimension with a light source that's coming from the upper right portion of the screen now this gives you a darker sphere and it essentially let me uh, make it a little more dark uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you that you can adjust this and you can pull different parts closer and it'll start to adjust according to where those parts are actually located and you can pull the sliders if you want something of more intensity and you can have a more realistic look all right now that's with just a flat object but Illustrator has the ability to do things like this and they can do it with, let me drag this to the side. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave it on here. I'm just going to create a new artboard. If you're not familiar with how artboards work, I have an artboard tutorial as well. Just look it up. But you can take something like, let's say, this. And I'm going to go to this artboard, paste it in front. And I can then make this a three-dimensional object. Now the best way to do that is you would go to effect 3d and you can go to extrude and bevel now there's actually a preview button in the lower left hand portion of the window that will allow you to see this now because of how i actually have this as a shape when it extrudes it's going to extrude as a flat shape but i'm not going to show you how to make the exact sphere right now what I'm showing you right now is how you can achieve similar three-dimensional status through lighting and shading okay so let's take a look let's um you know what? let's get out of here for a second let's drag these up just so you'll be able to see it we're gonna go back into effect we're gonna go to 3d and extrude and bevel and this is what we're gonna get when we click preview 
Now, you can rotate along three axes, X, Y, and Z, okay? If you were to rotate along the X axis, you'll see like in this window, this is how it moves. And you can also do it live within the window itself and rotate your object or across a different axis. And you'll see it reflected in your actual uh, shape on the board. All right, so you have different ways that you can adjust it. And then you can also change the perspective of the object which basically it, it gives you a, a pinch and bulge uh, aspect to your object. You'll notice if you pull it all the way to the right, how it kind of pulls that rear end of the actual object. But if you come all the way to the back, then you're fine. So let's say right now we choose to extrude it, let's say, 100 or around there now you'll see it gives it more depth the extrude basically tells it how deep this object is going to come out which then once you start playing with perspective gives the perspective more and more to work with then you have options like your shading which is beneath and you can change that by clicking the more options button and during that you can change the intensity of the light ambient light highlight intensity, etc. And these are represented by the little circles that are on the surface area to the left. And this will go in accordance to wherever you position it on your object. And if you look, you'll see that the light source is to the lower left now, as it is over here. And you can change that to be in front of the object or you can move it behind the object. You can also add additional light sources around the object itself in order to change how it's actually shaded and it will reflect accordingly. You can change the light intensity, the ambient light, again highlight intensity, the overall size of the highlight so you can make it larger or smaller and you can change how it blends in terms of how the shading transitions from light to dark so that it's smoother across the entire face of your shape. Okay? This in itself allows you to change the shading color. You can choose a custom color if you wanted something that's more relative to the color of the shape you have, like right now I have blue, I can choose a darker blue, and let's do that. And I click OK, and now you'll notice that it reflects more of a blue in the preview window as well as on the shape itself. And then I can click OK, and now it's been applied. Our, our basic shape is still there but this has now been applied to it. And if we were to open our appearances panel, let me pull this up just a little bit. Back. You'll notice that it has the 3D extrude and bevel option here. And if I wanted to get rid of it, I could select it, hit my trash icon, and now I have my original shape back. Okay, so that's one of the ways that you can do it. Another way that you can do it is you can go into your effect window, 3D, you can go to revolve and this is essentially the same thing except when you preview this it revolves around a specific axis so instead of extruding the object this revolves the complete shape an infinite a number of times around a circle okay so we can change the angle and because this is basically going around the x-axis infinitely. It's not going to really change if we were to change it left and right. Uh, but up and down, yes. And then we can, let's say we change this angle that way and matter of fact, let's bring it this way so you can see more of what's going on in the center. And then again, you can change different objects and aspects of this actual shape just like the cap the cap opens the shape up essentially depending upon whether you wanted a closed cap or you wanted an open cap it will be hollow but because we're in a revolve and this completely closes it you won't be able to see it with an open cap but if we were to go back to our 3d option and choose the open cap you would actually see a hollow area in the shell of the shape because it doesn't place a cap over the top it doesn't make it look like a complete solid shape looks hollow. Uh, offset. You can change, if you look at the live preview window, how far offset from the shape it actually is. As you see, the closer we get 
the tighter it goes, we can go all the way to zero, or we can go really, really extreme and go up to like this is 715. And it will continue to offset it really, really far from the actual axis point and rotate about that area. Okay. And this, as you see, is coming from the left edge. You could do it from the right edge. It's going to be the same thing, but shifted to the right edge of the shape. So same thing, different edge of the shape, left side, right side. You'll see that it falls in the center, depending upon which side you pick. And then all of the light options are exactly the same as the one that you chose before. And it will reflect depending upon what you actually selected in your lighting area. Okay. So you can see there are similarities in how the lighting is set up. You can achieve this with these 3D options. Uh, again, you can click OK. Your 3D Revolve will show up in your appearance menu if you want to get rid of it. You can click on it and click the trash icon. And then the last thing, if you go into 3D under your effect menu and you go to rotate and you click preview, you'll notice this will actually not give you a 3D object, but it will rotate the object as a flat shape as if it were a 3D object. So you right now you see the square pane that's around it is pretending as if it's rotating in a complete circle around 360 degrees. And that's gonna be top, bottom, left, right, X, Y, and Z axis uh, that you can actually rotate it on. So if I were to come here, it would be completely flat. But if I were to rotate downward, you'll notice that it's shifting downward. And then I could rotate to the left or right. And now it's as if it's facing in this direction, but flat because of how I'm looking at it. Bring it up some and you'll see the same thing there. And again, you can change perspective and it will shift, pinch or bulge depending upon the direction that you're going with your perspective. But I, I tend to leave it alone unless I'm trying to get some odd effect. And then you can use diffuse shading change the shading type that's on your actual object change the amount of ambient light Let's see go here change light intensity and then we can actually let's add another light change the intensity of that one ambient light and then you can have multiple light sources the only problem with this is because it's a flat object and the light is pretty much going to spread evenly across that surface area. So they're going to always like battle each other for position. So this is another option. Again, click OK. It'll show you 3D rotate. You can click it, click your trash icon, and boom, it's gone. But those are options for making your items look 3D without having to go through the steps of manipulating it with various shapes. So remember, these are two different shapes right now, but we use it in a way that makes it look like one. All right, so again, this was how to create your objects and make them look 3D in Adobe Illustrator, and I thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to have some more tutorials coming really soon, so all you got to do is keep up, check out the newest tutorials. I did the HD Remix, which is a complete drawing tutorial. It's called How to Draw the HD Remix. It was the uh, improved version of our previous tutorial on how to draw basically covering the same materials but with a better quality video and some little extras that I showed you along the way. I uh, also did a recent tutorial on the perspective grid. You got to check that out and I have another tutorial that's coming up and it is about actions in Adobe Illustrator. If it's not already out there it will be up soon so just take a look check out the other videos if you're not familiar with some of these like the artboard videos the pen tool different tool videos and uh, get yourself familiar with them okay I look forward to seeing you guys in the next class take care